We're gonna show you guys how to measure your wheels to determine if spacers are compatible with them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and show you guys what you need to measure in the back of your wheel to determine spacer compatibility. It comes down to this pocket right here. So what's gonna happen is, is when you place a spacer on your hub, you're going to actually have this stud, the factory stud, sticking out and protruding past the spacer. This stud is going to hit the back of the wheel in this area. So what you gotta do is figure out if this pocket is deep enough to soak up this stud. Now that you know what we need to take into consideration, we're gonna go ahead and measure the length of this stud and compare that to that pocket. So let's go in here and measure the stud. You've got almost 31 millimeters. The next thing you'll do is calculate the size of your spacer. So this is a 15 millimeter spacer. You'll put this on here, for example, 31 minus 15 means there's about 16 millimeters of stud protruding past this spacer. So let's demonstrate. You've got 16 millimeters. So we're gonna take this stud protrusion here and measure it inside of this cavity inside the back of the wheel. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but you can see how there's still some space behind this depth gauge to show that it will not interfere. Now I will say, you gotta be very careful because these molds have changed on the 20 inch Model 3 Performance Uber Turbine wheel. The very first few months of the release of this wheel, a 15 millimeter studded spacer, such as this Aspira one, was working. And then, after the first few months, the mold changed and the studded spacer no longer worked. That cavity, that pocket became more shallow. The only spacer that was working for that period of time was this H&R spacer. This is the H&R 14 millimeter spacer. What's different about this spacer is it does not have any studs as you can see, but it comes with this very special lug nut. Now take a look at this lug nut. This lug nut has a shank on it. This shank allows you to get more thread engagement from your stud. So I'm gonna demonstrate it inside of this wheel. I take this stud, you insert it into here, and you can see the shank almost flushing to the back of this mating surface. This is what gives you the additional thread engagement considering the spacer is not studded. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what happens with a studded spacer. So I've actually put these, stud these spacers together to emulate your hub here. So this is your factory stud sticking out past this spacer. And you can see here, Aspira will use the same stud length as a factory stud on the Performance Model 3. So if you can come in here and you can see that they're the same stud length, all right? So now, this is essentially your hub. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna show you that this stud here will not interfere with the back pocket. So as you can see now, this is flush, okay? No issues. This is your factory hub. This is the spacer. So check this out. This car actually had three wheels in which this 15 millimeter studded spacer will work, but one of them is the different mold. So check it out. We've laid them both down here to show you. This is the wheel where the 15 mil studded spacer will work. You can see here how there's no clearance issues, right? It clears. You can also see that our simulation, this sits flat, okay? No issues. But on this wheel, 
It's a completely different mold. You can see all in here, this pocket is much more shallow. So look at this. This has a two millimeter difference. This will hit. So now if I take our simulated hub here and put it in here, it's hard to see, but you can actually slip a piece of paper in here. There's a two mil gap right here, all the way around. So this is why I'm telling you guys to be very careful and to measure your wheels. We have looked at all of the stampings and markings on the back of the wheels. They have the same part numbers. It is impossible to tell the difference unless you physically measure. We have tried to find markings. We have not found markings. We knew about this problem back in 2021. Uh, I believe the molds, I thought they changed permanently around the July time, July, August time of 2021, but it looks like they still have production happening either from two different molds, different tooling, um, maybe from the same factory, or they have different factories themselves altogether. But what I can tell you is this car has three in the more favorable mold that is compatible with this studded spacer, and then one which is not. So now that you know what to measure, it's strongly recommended that you take your wheels, measure this pocket depth to determine what type of spacer do you need. Do you need a non-studded h &R type of spacer that has this proprietary lug nut, shank lug nut, or can you use the slightly lesser expensive studded spacer like what Aspira provides? Now, Aspira does include a QR code on the front of all of their boxes. This QR code will lead you to a guide that teaches you exactly what I just demonstrated. If you guys are interested in either of these spacers, we do have them on our website. If you're not sure what to do, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you out. All right, so I wanna show you the after results of installing these spacers on this vehicle. As we showed you, there is a difference in various molds on the Uber turbines for the Performance Model 3. In this case, we did end up having to go with the HR 14 millimeter spacer. We could not use a studded spacer. But we wanted to show you the results. We, this car is lowered on some adjustable shocks and springs, adjustable rear camber arms. We've set the camber to a negative one degree in the rear and you can see the fleshness of it. Again, this is the h and 14 millimeter spacer found on our website. We're gonna show you guys some B-roll of the fitment, but I wanted to thank you guys for watching. We hope this proved to be informative for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.